We don't have to play them, we think. We know who they both are. Welcome into the Tech Sacks Rewind here. David Nuno in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Nick Savage with me. Caitlin Torn there at the Angry Elephant News and Social Center. Nick, you have a question for me, huh? Yeah. Um, again, wrong person to ask you this, but I was told by the group behind me to ask your opinion on the uh, Kendrick Lamar and uh, Drake beef. Who, whose side are you on? Well, I don't know why Kendrick and Drake have a beef. I know that Drake currently has a lot of beef with several people. He had a diss track not long ago and I, th- I thought yeah Kendrick was on there and now Kendrick apparently has responded Kanye's trying to get in the middle of it oh, I, I am oh goodness yeah I know I'm typically on team Drake but I, I I don't know the circumstances is there I know you're Mr. Country Music well that's me actually I, I told you I was just uh oh wait no that's uh that's Caitlin hi Caitlin right do you there. know the I'm beef? Sure she has a take what's what's up with the beef why, why? um do you think our audience cares I actually have no take I don't know what y'all are talking about, but Good. David, I didn't know you were so up to date in pop culture. What do you mean? What did I do today? That was pop culture ish. You just like you always know what's going on. I feel like you just know about pop culture. You know, it's because I'm young. I'm young. You know, young, young. at heart. I got yeah. kids. It's what happens. You're a cool dad. Uh, team Kanye, by the way, if anybody's asking, I know you're not supposed to say that. At least I think he's a weirdo, but I love his music. All right. So on the rewind today, Caitlin, what was your favorite part? Um, I liked being here for the baseball bunch, not okay. usually here on Fridays. So. I don't think I liked the way you answered that. I think you felt like, I feel like I have to answer. I didn't like anything about the show, but I guess those guys no, were good. I That's loved what it. sounded like. Loved the whole thing. Okay, well, th- now you've changed my mind. Nick, good. your favorite part. Good. Uh, my favorite part was when I thought uh, Billy was still talking off air, <laughs> and he was, pull, you know, you're doing it on purpose. So that was my favorite part. Dramatic interpretation of what it sounds like during the break. Yeah. And, oh, Olin Buchanan was on the show, and I think Olin was on one. Caitlin, is that right? Olin was on one, on one in the go hour. That and more. Check out the uh, rewind. I want to see Patrick Beverly suspended for the entire season next year for what he did last night. And we're going to take, take a look at the video. He threw a ball at a fan that was apparently clapping at him. And now, he threw he it play? twice, apparently. Who does he play for again? Uh, Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks. They were eliminated. Yeah. But they threw the ball, boom, and he hits the person. And um, teammates came to stop him. I had a problem with it. No doubt. But then his press conference afterwards, OB, did you see the press conference? I heard about it. I heard, I heard the video, uh, I'm sorry, the audio of it. Well, let's go to it and watch Pat Beverly there. When he's trying to be asked about what happened, he is very dismissive of the ESPN reporter, even pushes her uh, phone or her, her microphone away. Let's, let's take a listen. Here. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Before I finish. Yeah. You subscribe to my pod? Do I subscribe to you? I do not. Subscribe. So I'm, I, you can't interview me then? Okay. No disrespect. Well, J- Jamal is here. You, you, you subscribe? Okay, cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, again, there were a couple times within a bucket or two. Um, in previous games, y'all have been able to kind of get over that hump or maybe. Um, was it anything they did in particular, or was it just one of those where the bucket didn't go down, there wasn't the stop, they made one? What, what kind of prevented that you all from being able to get over? like you have in the past. You'll move that mic, please, or just get out the circle, please, for me, please, ma'am. If you're not subscribed to my pod, I appreciate it. Thank you. Wait, she moved. She no. Moved. No, don't move. No, I'm not going to move. So this, I'm, this is how I do my job, dude. That the, the player empowerment era and the podcast, look, I love it. They have a voice. That's gross. That's disrespectful. You, you do not have the option to do... She didn't ask a mean question. She, I don't, actually, I didn't hear the question she asked. But they're asking about the altercation. You listen, do, do you subscribe to my podcast? If not, I'm not going to listen. Suspend that man. Oh, yeah, he'll be... Uh, th- there will be something come down, whether it be a fine or... Um, For both, though. I think. But, of course, think about who the NBA commissioner is. You really think he's going to come down on a player? I do. Um, what does a need to watch out for a, a team that's extremely hungry in LSU? I think we touched on it early. They're playing for their postseason lives. I don't think that this is a team that's in danger of missing Hoover, considering uh, what Auburn's record is right now in the league and what Missouri's doing in the East. I think they're squarely going to make it to Hoover, so they've always got the chance to run the table at the SEC tournament to get to the NCAA to, uh, field of 64. Obviously, Jay Johnson and Co. don't want to do that. They'd rather wrap up a at large bid sooner rather than later. So LSU is definitely a team that's got more to play for, uh, but that doesn't limit what a and is playing for. They're still playing for a top four national seed and potentially a top overall seed. So watch out for a hungry team 
that would love nothing more than to take two of three from you in their place. So I'm excited to see uh, just how hostile the box can get. I've heard a lot about it. So seeing it for the first time in person uh, this weekend will be pretty enjoyable, but I hope it's even more enjoyable because the maroon and white are taking the series. Yeah, when I start when this season started, I had questions about LSU just from their overall athletic profile to be an elite team in college baseball. Uh, when you take Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens and uh, Ty Floyd and who was the left-handed hitter that DH formed a bunch last year from New Orleans, got a bunch of hits. Um, uh, Duga, Gavin Dugas, like they they lost some real players, man, and it was going to be tough for them to replace them. And coming into the season, I didn't know if they had the pieces, if they had recruited well enough to influx or to, to – to put the talent level back on par of what it was or at least get close. And went out and got Braswell from South Carolina who plays shortstop. Uh, freshman Milam from Albuquerque, New Mexico is playing second base. He's a small, real tiny kid. Um, they've gone in and out of left fielder Mac Bingham, who's a transfer from Arizona. They thought they would get more out of him. Paxton Kling has been a huge disappointment from them in center field. He's been a spot starter. So they just haven't – they haven't had enough of their guys that they thought were going to play well, play well. And where have we seen that? Texas A&M in 2023, right? Well, we know who they both are. We don't have to play them, we think. We know who they both are. LSU's a team, a lot of talent, but replacing some you know, incredible players. And they're a team that's struggling to make the postseason. And A&M is a team that's going to be, an, they're going to be a national title contender. That's what we know. We don't know how far A&M will go or won't go. We don't know if LSU gets in and proves problematic in a regional. We don't know those things, but we know who they are. It's long. We're deep enough in the season. We know exactly who they both are. With that said, A&M has played a lot of uh, – they've actually played a lot of – they've won the, – the interesting thing about A&M is they've won so many of these series 2-0 to start the series, right? I think every one of them except the first two. You had Florida and then Mississippi State. They were one and one through two games. But I think the rest of them, the Aggies have been up 2-0. Like if they were super regionals, they'd be over in two games. Um, but a lot of those 2-0s have included really close games that have kind of pivot, pivoted on an inning or a couple outs or, or a comeback or whatever. And then and then they've they've lost a close third game. In a lot of these instances, uh, a couple times they've swept. A and M is is, I think they're one of the three best teams in the SEC. I think they're better than Kentucky. I know Kentucky's game up in the standings. I think it, it's A and M, Tennessee, and Arkansas are the three best teams in this league. And LSU is a shadow of what they were last year, but they're good enough in Baton Rouge to win a series against anyone anyone in the conference. A&M, Tennessee, Arkansas. I don't know how their series with Arkansas went. They play, I know I know when they played Tennessee, that was a really competitive series. I watched a little bit of that one. Um, so the Aggies are going to have to go out and play well on the gun lately. You've been telling us this is coming since Trev was hired. And maybe even alluded no, to it way before, before that. Yeah, and there are people that now will say, well, we've all been. No, you hadn't said crap. Now you're saying it. Dellinger's been saying it from day one. Dellinger's the best in the business when it comes to covering these things. Outside of him, there hasn't been enough talk of this. And it's been talked about within athletics, not just at A&M, but around the SEC and around the country for a long time. And it's coming, and I heard y'all talking the other day, and somebody said like two to three years. No, it's coming in like a year, the next 18 months, yep. if not a year. Where, And that's been the push, I think, of any smart institution, collective, any of that. All these donors that, that you know, let's say OU just won out for a recruit. Somebody was saying that they, you know, I've been hearing that they, A&M offered this guy a ton of money. They didn't. Um, the number was so far north of anything any A and M defensive lineman does that they wouldn't have done that to go get him. So they were tapped out of that one super early. But there was a massive, allegedly a massive bidding war between OU, Texas, LSU, Missouri. He ended up at OU. You cannot 
sustain that with your donors. If OU comes in the league and goes eight and four in year one, which might actually be pretty good for them. Yeah. They might go seven and five. How do you keep selling these people to give tens and hundreds of thousands and in some instances multiple millions of dollars to the collective without the on field return on that investment? Let Sark and Texas go eight and four this year when everybody thinks they're going to go undefeated, 11 and one. Let that happen one year. You watch how quickly they forget about the playoff. And they go, well, God, with all this talent, what were you? well, they lost 11 draft picks. David, who would write the best dish track in the office? My pick was Olin Buchanan because he's got a way with words that I don't think people understand. So I think he would drop the hardest bars on any of us. No. I think Luke he... says himself. No. I, yeah, you know what? I'm going Luke or Richard Zane. I no. am not going Olin Buchanan. He would write like a DJ Jazzy Jeff Fresh Prince type of rap. I think uh, now who would perform it the best? It's got to be Bronny or myself. But who would do the Bronny. best write? Yeah, I think Bron- Bronny's from the mean streets of wherever he's from. Like, yeah, UGK, he's that kind of guy. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with the best writer, Luke or Zane, not OB. OB would have some corny, like, you know... Pop and shop, like whatever. He would he would rhyme everything like you know, like a nursery rhyme. Kaylin, you agree? I agree. It would a hundred percent not be OB. All right, tell the people what to do. Get out there and like, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. Did Post you, it on your Instagram. Did you forget? Because you said get out there, and like I was like, oh, what am I supposed to say here? Is that what it, what happened? There? I almost forgot, but then I then I remembered. All right, we'll see you next time.